Guys, welcome back to our playthrough of Tomb Raider Remastered. This is level 12, the Sanctuary of the Skion. Already, I see a dramatic improvement in this room. Look at these fully rendered trees and this 3D foliage sort of growing all and around the entrance to the sanctuary there. A big difference from the flat textures and the 2D cross-section images that used to comprise the trees and the foliage. I also noticed the lighting is dramatically improved and far more realistic. It's sort of emanating from that doorway as opposed to being illuminated here. So it's a very strong start to this rather iconic level. So we have overcome the trials of the Obelisk of Kamun and gained access to this very, very secluded sanctuary here. Start by grabbing the goodies. Got a lovely symmetrical beginning to this level. We've got two iron gates on either side that we cannot open. If we look through the bars, we can see a scarab object similar to the one that we picked up in the last level. We'll deal with that a bit later. I'll just take a quick look compared to what it used to look. Very, very faithful, isn't it? down to the colors and everything. They've kept this one very close. Well, the third Skion awaits inside and let's not keep it waiting any longer. see them explode into fiery debris courtesy of the remaster and a warm welcome to the sanctuary look how wonderful these textures look absolutely amazing. It actually looks like weathered coarse stonework there. And this rocky gravel beneath our feet. A dramatic glow up from an assortment, if you will, of cracked pixels. We can hear the stalking of more of the Atlantean mummies around. Oof, I'm already struck by the lighting, particularly on this roof and in this corner here. It was always a remarkably iconic level, cavernous and depressive, but just brought, brought to such beauty thanks to these textures here. And look at that, that volumetric lighting coming in from this enormous fissure in the, in the cave roof. Stunning. I mean, I love the darkness of the original, don't get me wrong, but that is just such an elegant way to bring light onto this monstrous structure over here. On that note, let's have a look at the iconic vista. The enormous Sphinx at the Sanctuary of the Skion. Stunning. Look at that Elysian aura, that, that almost Borealis-like glow. It's just gorgeous. The majesty of it is humbling in a way, isn't it? That sense of scale of this level is just so unparalleled. If we look here, 
a dramatic change from its original form, but so very, very faithful. Fully rendered face there as it faces the light. Beautiful rounded paws. Sensational. So faithful. Let's begin the level, shall we? There's a switch right up there, you can see it, and that is our first destination for the level. I love that. It almost looks like mist. It just fills the empty space as it sort of oscillates and moves there. It just makes like a, like a veil, a shroud. Reminds me a little bit of the fog from Silent Hill, albeit much, much more subtle. Beautiful. Look how shrouded in darkness Lara is as well, with the light not being in this corner. As you can see in the original, far more of an illuminated space, and the light hitting just that section there. And also, totally absent of any volumetric effects. Huge glow up. Sphinx looks beautiful from here. How it's sort of hind, and its paws are sort of in darkness, and the rest of the light is just shining on its face. Okay, it's opened a giant door to the right-hand side of the Sphinx. We've got an Atlantean inbound. It can be dicey fighting them in such a narrow walkway. Let's head down and head to the door. Oh, that looks like it might be death. I always forget where to climb down from. Bit too high.
Last time I played through this, I missed this little hole in the wall here, which is where we have to go. There was nothing actually in the water pool beneath us, behind us. Okay, so before we head up there, we'll just hop down this little path here. Because we want to grab this little guy. Nestled in the sand bed there so beautifully. Because we're going to need it when we head just up there, you can see it. Gonna slide down this ramp and we're gonna grab onto that stone walkway there. That one can be a bit of a tricky, um, tricky jump to jump at the very last moment. grab the goodies. As we could see, this room was guarded by another of the centaur uh, bioweapon creatures, kind of like we saw at the Tomb of Tihokan, so we know that this is a very important object here. They didn't want just anyone encroaching, it seems. I'll take a sec to remark at the room, comparison to the original. We've got a beautiful opening there into some hieroglyphs, didn't even notice that. Totally absent in the original. Just look how faithful all the hieroglyphs, paintings, and textures are. Just stunning. Huge difference. And even to the lighting. The lighting is very realistic across the board. Even here. I'm not sure there was an opening here in the original. Let's have a look. No, it was totally sealed as well. So they've added again a reason for there being a beautiful light source on that pool of water beneath us. Lovely. Alright. We have picked up one golden ank, distinct from the last level that we saw. We'll head back up into the main Sphinx complex and we'll look for a second switch. Ah, look at the lighting here, how there's darkness on this underside and light as it gets to the top. Beautiful. Such a big difference. Alright, now if we take a careful look, we'll actually perch ourselves up here so we can get a better lay of the, uh, lay of the land here. There's a switch just up there, and that's where we'll be heading to next. Look at the light coming out and hitting this particular pillar. I was struck by it immediately. Totally absent in the original. 
As you can see, it was a perfectly sealed cavern in the original, which gave it a kind of mysterious, hidden feel. But it's just been given new life with just a little bit of a hint of a sky. And the volumetric effects up there. And the light coming around from this corner. You thought we left those chattering teeth back in Greece, but we didn't. It's opened a door somewhere else in the level. Beautiful hieroglyphs there. Big difference from the original, isn't it? A series of just shapes or almost letters. Now we've actually got a lot of like the scarab I can see. The bird, the hawk. Lots of symbols of Egypt. And a little interloper to boot. Let's get down safely. A standing jump from here will do. Okay. Just had to get a better look there. It's harder to see in this kind of dark new engine. was a slight miscalculation on my part, sorry, but we got down there anyway. <sighs> Alright, so now we have to head to that door that we opened. For that, we've got to head back up to the back of the Sphinx. We'll use this raised sand bank here. And we'll use this little chip on the Sphinx's shoulder. To head on up. <laughs> okay, now this is a little bit of a scary jump. You can, if you just take a running jump, you'll be able to land just on the corner. And just up here is the second trial of the sanctuary. Beautiful. I noticed immediately this light source. As you can see, totally absent in the original. Just some pixelated sand beneath us. Now just gorgeous. So, we need to get up. We can use this lovely block. Floating into lovely flame there. And our prize, the second ank. This room too has been given a light source. And I just think it's a really elegant way to punctuate the key item of the level, right? The prize, the golden ank, and I love now that it's just in a little pillar of light just hitting it. It's alluring, and of course the interloper would have no idea 
that a centaur, an Atlantean bioweapon, would be there waiting for them. Any and all who try to take it. It's a really, really lovely touch. Okay. Looking good. We have two golden angst now. Our destination is just there, the very top of the Sphinx's head. Alright, so if we mount this curved block here, which by the way is a really elegant texture and incredibly faithful to the original. Looks like a half like seared rock and the rest of it's all gravelly, very nice. And we arrive at the topmost point of the cavern. And as you can see here, there's a little slot for us to place the ink. Okay, so two things before we head down into yet another heart of the Sphinx. There is a trophy for doing a handstand onto the Sphinx, on the, onto the Sphinx's head, rather. You can do it from here. If you hold the walk button as you climb up, you'll grab it just like this. Second, we will actually head to the one and only secret in the level. It's just this way. Just be careful navigating up here. We are perilously high. Okay, now. You can see down below that there look, seems to be floating guns just there. It's actually something we can land on, right? So just do a running jump and aim straight for that pair of guns. Simple. And I present to you our first fully automatic weapons. The Uzis. Oh, and they look stunning. I'm going to gawk at them just as we get to safe land. Because something is fluttering behind me. Not only have they improved the sound, but just look at them in Lara's holsters. They have that sort of, that backing of it, that little curved thing. I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry. I don't know about guns. I live in Australia. What do we know about guns? Um, but it's got a beautiful little nozzle. The clip is gray. I mean, look at the difference, right? Just sort of rectangular objects. So beautiful. They've actually got textures on them and everything. I love the way they sit in Lara's holsters. Amazing. So, so good. I also noticed that they scatter gun canisters everywhere, just like Tomb Raider 3. So that's a really nice uh, kind of consistent feature now across, I assume, all three games. Like, I can't wait to see what they've done uh, with Tomb Raider 2 and 3 as well. Let's just grab some of the goodies here. before we head further into a very impressive and iconic vista. Or should I say another one, because this game is laden with iconic vistas. Excellent. It's a little high here. That's all right.
All right, I cannot wait to see what they've done with the room just below us here. It's one of my favorite areas of Tomb Raider 1. It used to... Actually, I'm going to save it, by the way. Um, it used to scare me as a kid. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's just the size or the darkness, or maybe it's, you know, a little latent thalassophobia or something. I don't know. But let's, um, let's pop in. Stunning. Absolutely amazing. I mean, the light hitting the two submerged, sunken statues. And, and look at the difference. You can tell that it was probably Horus on the left there and Anubis, his half-brother, on the right there. But what, what a change. Just, just amazing. Shedding light to an ancient, sunken secret. I love it. Brilliant. Uh, and I love how dark it is at the very depth there. I mean, of course, you can see why as a kid you might be afraid, right? Because it's just pitch black in that water. You don't know what the hell's down there. So we obviously can see a little better, but it's a small price to pay for that level of beauty. All right, so let's get things started, shall we? We're going to swim right down to the very, very depths of this flooded cavern. And we'll go into the paws of Anubis. As the current takes us upwards, Oh, even this room. Wow. Beautiful. Got a light pouring in here. The rest of it shrouded in darkness. Again, an absence from the original. Totally sealed cavern like the rest of the level. Gorgeous. I can't get over the Uzis. They feel so like heavy and cool now. I love the canisters. I love the smoke. I love the light coming from them. Where did he fly off to? Ah, there he is. I'll switch it to the original graphics so we can see the difference in firing. Big difference, right? Okay. So when we pulled the lever inside the Anubis um, statue, it drained a lot of the water from this cavern. And now we can beautifully see the light beams go all the way down. We have to keep heading down. Just got to remember where it's actually safe to drop down. I think it's from this side. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Just slide backwards. Beautiful. Look what a difference having a, th a rounded 3D object made, right? 
You couldn't even tell that it was meant to be, you know, a beast's head or an animal's head there. And Horace too. Just an amazing work. Even the hieroglyphs on their little headdress here. Totally welcome. Ah, love seeing it this way. And without spoilers, Lara might be dealing with uh, Horus and another Egyptian figure in another adventure. But we'll wait till we get there and let's pray it gets remastered as well. There is a golden switch just here on Anubis. Which opens up the door at the foot of Horus's gargantuan edifice. I'm just gonna double check. I think I may have left a pickup somewhere. Let me just have a look. Ah, yes. Some Uzi clips, which I definitely want because I love the Uzis a lot. When I was a kid, I used to have a water gun of uh, Uzi in the shape of an Uzi. I, of course, bought two, and I believe it was like green or blue, and I actually painted it grey to match uh, Lara's from Tomb Raider 1. Probably a red flag to some parents, but it was still a kind of a fond memory. We water guns in the shape of, uh, of firearms, I don't think we do that anymore, not in this day and age. All right, so you can see here we're climbing up inside the statue of Horus. And it is a dizzying, dizzying height. The sense of scale on this level is just amazing. Give me all the Uzi clips, all of them. And look where we have emerged, right at the beginning of the level. So if you kind of think about it, when you walk in, you're walking in and there's like the two statues on either hand side of you, right? On, on your left and your right. Giant statues of Horus and Anubis, each with its corresponding trial, because you notice that there was a trial on the left and the right hand side of Horus and Anubis. And then when you emerge from all of that, you come out here right where the level began. That is the mastery of the level design of Tomb Raider 1. Ooh, that was close, that was close. That little one needed to leave me alone so I could get the big fry. The bigger fish. See? Back to the beginning. Amazing. We can insert the scarab that we just picked up. There's a medipack to replace the one I just burnt. I always like peering through the little peephole here. Beautiful there, we can see the sarcophagus and the light, the dancing beautiful lights. Big difference from the original, but damn is it faithful. Alright, here we go. This could be it. This could be the silent sanctuary of the final piece of the Skion. Look how peaceful it is in comparison to the chaos of the rest of the level, right? I still got a pain in my brain from you. And it's telling me funny ideas now, like to shoot you to hell. Oh, it's Lawson and he's right behind me.
He came to finish the job. And what an elegant... <laughs> what an elegant way to die. Looking very graceful like a ballerina there. Beautiful. Well. That might have been the last trial before we claim our ancient mystical prize. I always loved this room as a kid. I just think it's so beautiful and peaceful and symmetrical. It kind of looks like a temple in many ways. And just this way is our prize. Look at that. Look at the lighting, the difference, the single light beam there. Just, just amazing. It's just created a lovely focal point. All right, so we're going to finally have the completed ski on. We should grab it and get out of here before any more of Natla's goons come after us. I will catch you guys in the next level.